Hello Makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. Good to have you here. Thanks for dropping by. Last year, one of the videos I dropped really focused on using a Cricut for the purposes of creating abstract art. And several of you wrote in and said you really enjoyed that and could I do more things with the Cricut. Well, guess what? Today is that day. Now, what is a Cricut? Well, this is a Cricut. It's basically a tool that allows us to use computers to come up with designs, and then this tool will cut them out for us as a cutter. It can also do other things. You could put pens in here, use it as a plotter, etc. Most people will use it to cut things out. And we're going to cut some pieces out, and I've been thinking I want to create some abstract just blobs. I have some black shapes, a few blobs here that I've created. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to create a bunch of these and just create an array. Put this in the middle of a white sheet of paper and just create something that's just interesting to look at. So in order to do that, we're going to have to move over to the computer and I'm going to show you a few different pieces of software that we can take advantage of to make this job even easier. Now the software that comes with Cricut is called Cricut Design Space. And I'll be honest with you, it's gotten better over the years, but it still is a very difficult program to use. And I don't want to throw too much shade at it because in truth, they put a lot of work into making it better over the years, but it's still not going to win software of the year, to be honest. And one of the challenges we're going to run into is I want to be able to create some blobby shapes. And here's the thing you're going to run into. If I come in here and say, I want to make a new project, it's going to give me an area where I can work. And we'll talk a little bit more about this as we lay things out. If I were to grab a basic shape like a circle and say, okay, I want to do things to change this shape, there's really nothing I can do here. If you notice up here, there's a tool called Warp, and when I go in here, basically it allows me to start a free trial for something called Cricut Access, which they'll charge me $10 a month so I can use tools like this. So I'm annoyed with the nickel and diming, if I'm being very honest, and also it's not a very good tool to do some of the abstract things that we want to do. So guess what? We're not going to use it initially. We will need to use it for cutting things out. So I want to show you another piece of software that can help us solve our design problems and also do it for free. Now, if you're not familiar with it, Inkscape is an open source computer program, which means it's been designed by people all around the world, volunteers, and it is being offered to everybody for free. And it was supported by Linux, Windows, and Mac OS depending on what your needs are. And the thing that's really nice about working with Inkscape, by the way, if you go to inkscape.org, you can download your own copy. It doesn't take up a lot of room, but it does some pretty cool things for what we need to do. Now, if you're familiar with other drawing programs, this may look somewhat familiar. And over here on the left-hand side, we have a roll of two tools that we can work with that allow us to do various things, and also some modifiers up here. And we're gonna use some very, very basic things for this particular project. The first thing I wanna be able to do is grab a, just a, a shape here, and I'm gonna grab the circular shape. So I have an ellipse the arc tool. Let me click over here. And I'm just gonna draw out a shape. Now, by the way, this is being filled with yellow right now. I can come and change that to uh, whatever's going to make me happy. Um, I may just make it black because that's what our final is going to be. So I'll come in and say, let's make this a black color. Now, what I want to do is I want to modify this. I want to create a, a blob shape out of it. More blobby than this oval that we have here currently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to grab the selector tool. And of course, this allows me to be able to do different selections to it. I can resize this. If I click on it, it allows me to change modes. And I can now come in here. And if I wanted to rotate it, I can rotate it. So very easily to click on something, either resize or stretch out or to turn in some way. But what if we want to go a little bit further? Well, by clicking on it, once again, I'm using this arrow tool that's been selected. If I now go up to the path area and say, I want to create a, an object to path, I can click on this. And now if I come down to the next tool here, which is the node tool, I can see different handles that show up. And if I pull on these, it gives me these Bezier handles that I can bend my shape to fit my particular needs. So I can grab this, drag it in and out. I can bend these to make whatever kind of warpy, fun shape that I want. And let's say I want to be able to draw something out. Of course, I can grab one of these handles and pull it like this. Well, let's say I wanted to grab this area right here. Well, if I simply double click on it, it will add a new handle. And now I can grab and warp this out. So I'm basically just coming in here. I'm making some interesting warpy style shapes. And this is going to make things a little bit more fun for us. So let's say that's the... Uh, the shape I've been kind of thinking about here. Yeah, because I thought about this a lot. And there it is, and it's ready to go. 
Now, if I want to take this blob and use it to make another blob, I could click on it to select it. And then I can make sure I have my arrow tool here selected. I can come in here and I can say Control C and Control V and I can make a new version of it. And now if I go back into my node tool, I can again do some twisting and turning and changing and make all sorts of uh, a new blob. So let's just bring that down there and yeah, let's blob it like that. Well, it's a little too blobby, I think. Let's bring this in. There we go. Don't want it to be too off the uh, off the charts here. Again, if I want to move them, just grab your arrow tool. I'm going to kind of line these up here. So there's one blob. Uh, there's my second blob. And by the way, you could also have fun with these blobs if you wanted to. Let me grab, uh, grab this blob and I'm going to copy and paste it again. And if I bring this in, uh, once again, if I use my node tool, I can actually kind of create almost like puzzle pieces that kind of interact with one another. See how these almost look like they kind of were designed to, to fit together, right? I could do something like that and, uh, you know, change this around however I, I want to. All right. So what, once again, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing holding us back from being able to create different types of things. At the end of the day, what we're really trying to do with this tool is to create these objects that will allow us to cut them out on our Cricut Maker. So we don't have to do this by hand because if I'm being honest, if I had to use a utility knife to cut these out and, and create the shape, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it because it's, it's a hard thing to do. It's a tough thing to do. I'm going to kind of soften this bump a little bit here. There we go. And let me copy this guy. And again, paste it out over here. And uh, I'll warp this one uh, in a brand new way. Let's bring this out a little bit. We'll bring this over here, up like this. Let's say this comes like this. This comes up a little higher. And there we go. So we have, so we have four warpy, blobby shapes that we want to be able to use here. Now, I'm doing this in Inkscape. How possibly am I going to take this and use it in Cricut? Well, it's a good question and I have an answer to that. So if I come in here and say, okay, my document is ready to go. I'm going to say, I want to save this document and uh, I'll call it something like blob, uh, blob two, because I actually have a blob one in here somewhere. And let me just save it on my desktop and click on save. So it saves it as an SVG file. And what this is going to allow me to do now is if I go back over to Cricut, and I still have it open here, and I say, okay, what I'd like to do now is I would like to be able to upload that file that I already created in Inkscape. So I'm going to click on the upload function over here, and I'm going to reach out, and I'm going to find where it is. I'm going to say upload image, and I'm going to point to where it is. It's on my desktop. That's where I left it. So if I go to desktop and scroll down here, there it is, blob2 and it's showing up like that. And I say, okay, that's great. Prepare to uh, upload. I, I will I'll prepare to upload this. So I'm gonna come in here and uh, I'm gonna say upload right down here in the lower right-hand corner. So now it's showing up here in my list of projects. And if I click on this, I can now select it and go down here to the lower right-hand corner and say, I wanna add this to my canvas. And it's going to bring it back out to my canvas here and allow me if I want to grab each one of these as uh, I'm going to have to, by the way, these are all grouped together at this point. So if I come in here and right click on it, I can come and say ungroup these. I want these to be separate elements. So I can come in and select them and move them around. And what I want to do is I want to prep these so that I'll be able to, of course, cut them out of my Cricut cutter. And so I'm going to be using a piece of black cardstock, which is basically eight and a half by 11. So if I bring these pieces in here like this, I want to make sure they're going to fit if I run this sideways between eight and a half by 11. So those are going to work just fine. Now, just as a proof of concept, I'm going to just cut these guys out. And obviously I would go back and create more pieces and uh, kind of load up my page best I can. But in this case, I have something that's, that's ready to go and I have my different blobs. Now, once I have things laid out the way I want them, and basically all I'm doing is thinking about how I want to make sure that the cutter is going to have enough room to get around each piece as it cuts it out of this black piece of paper. I'm going to come up here to the upper right hand corner. I'm going to click on the make button. It's going to say your project will be saved. I'm going to save it to my stuff. And I'm going to give this a name. I'll call this uh, blob two. And I'll say, let's save it to my collection of, uh, of goodies, please. So it says, all right, how would you like to cut this out? I'm going to load the materials on a mat. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. 
And I'm going to say my mat is going to be, it's a, I have a 12 by 24 inch mat that I'm working with. So I'll just say that's the one, but I'm just using the top part of it. I'm going to click on the confirm button. So once again, it's kind of showing me what that mat would look like. And if I had this mat covered with a black piece of paper, I could just fill it with all my different blob shapes. But in this scenario, it's giving me kind of a better understanding of how I might move things around and say, okay, those are the things that I want to cut. This is going to be a very basic cut. I might bring it down actually, since I have, since I have real estate up here to work with. There we go. All right. So those four blobs and I'm going to say, let's continue. So what it's doing now is my computer is looking for my Cricut cutter. So I'll give it a moment to do that. It seems to have found it. It's going to say, okay, do me a favor. Tell me what kind of material we're using. And I'm going with the default. It's heavy watercolor paper. In our case, it's actually not. It's going to be cardstock, but it's still about 140 pounds. And say, let's do that. And it's going to say, okay, load tools and material. And what we have is we have a fine point blade that's been loaded in clamp B. And it tells us next thing we need to do is load the map and then press the load unload button. So let's do that now. Now the mat I'm using is, is this guy right here. And it's adhesive on one side. So it's a, this is a heavy duty one. It's pretty sticky. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a black sheet of my cardstock and I'm gonna place it here at the top of the cutter, which is pretty much where I've told my shapes to be cut out from. And I'm gonna just smooth it down. So it's, uh, it's adhered now to, uh, to my sheet. What I wanna do now is I wanna feed the sheet into my Cricut cutter. And I'm gonna click on this button that's flashing, the arrow button. and it's ready to go. And now that it's loaded in, it's gonna bring the other button, the Cricut cutter button, it's gonna start flashing. And now what I need to do is click on that and it will start to draw this piece of paper in and it will cut it out based upon whatever we put into place. That's all four of them. I'm going to press my double arrow here again to get this out. Now you may not be able to see this on camera, but as I peel this black piece of paper off, you will be able to see that what is being left behind are the pieces that the Cricut cut out for me. And I can simply just, again, like take my time here a little bit, but get a fingernail underneath there. And there we go. We have a random shape I can add to my pile of, of shapes. And I can do that with a few more of, of these shapes. So once again, the process here is not crazy complicated. We've only done four shapes. We could certainly go in and grab a couple dozen. Now for the project that I want to work on, I'm working with a piece of 18 by 24 inch heavy duty watercolor paper. And I'm thinking that I want to do a matrix of these blobs, uh, six across and eight north to south. So what do we have? A total of 48 if we do my if I've done my math right. So I have a, a small handful here, but I'm gonna go back to the computer now and I'm going to uh, work on designing uh, some more blobs for our purposes and we'll get those cut out in the next little bit. So once I'm done with my project, I can click on done and uh, my blobs too is ready to go. Now I'm gonna go back into Inkscape and uh, I'm gonna continue my work here. I don't wanna use these uh, same blobs, but I'm gonna make some variations, right? Cause I'm just looking for things that are somewhat somewhat similar yet different because I want to have something that will work. So I'm just going to come in here and modify these guys because there's no such thing as a perfect blob probably. And we'll bring this down here. There we go. Some blob. Oh, there we go. That's got, that's got some blobbiness to it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to bring this uh, guy down a little bit, make some room for myself. And let me bring this in. I'll do, I'll do a row of three on each one of these. Again, let me grab my node tool so I can make some changes here. And that looks good. And this one here. And it's kind of fun. There's a certain aspect of uh, just liberty to just go and do whatever you want here with these random blobs. Again, let me make some copies here. I got to grab them. Select this with my arrow tool first. Copy that. I'm going to copy it again. Oh, what the heck? While I'm here, why don't I just make a whole bunch? 
and then I can go in, click on my node tool and uh, just start making these all different. Okay, now this time, uh, because I am using the whole sheet of paper, we should be able to get 12 different items out of here. I'm going to put it in here. Let me slide it into my guides here. Push my double arrow to draw it in. And it's ready to go. Now I click on the Cricut Cutter button and uh, give it a moment to connect to the computer. And we're going to start cutting. Okay, so once again, let's get this out of the cutter. If I peel back the black, what's going to be left behind on my mat are only going to be those things that we uh, we have cut out, the pieces we want. So these are looking pretty cool. So I have eight in here already with another 12, so that's going to bring me up to 20 of these blobs all together. Again, I'm going for 48. So uh, I'm going to uh, spend a few moments going back and I'm going to make some modifications to the 12 blobs I have and uh, cut those out and uh, I'm going to do that a couple times. And then I'm going to have our, myself a big pile of different blobs to work with and then when I get back I'll show you what we're going to do with them as we mount them onto our paper. Okay and welcome back. So yeah we have a, a cornucopia of blobs as it turns out and uh, I was able to cut out 48 of them and uh, I'm just going to just, like I said, I want to put them in rows of six going across the top and have eight rows of six. Uh, rhyme or reason, not quite sure there is one, but again, I'm going to look for something that kind of balances out and looks kind of fun. Now, am I going to be putting these sheeps in randomly and just kind of, you know, drop them in and just cover this? Not really. I do want to have something that looks like they're kind of ordered, even though they're in order at the same time. So I'm going to make sure I have these distinct rows in here. Now, do I need to draw a line across? Well, possibly. I might need a guideline of some sort as I put these things into place. But I'm just trying to get a, uh, an initial sense of what it's going to look like. So there we go. So if I bring things up here and say, OK, this is going to go up. Uh, let's say we come in about two inches from the sides. That'll give us a sense of where we need to line things up. So we'll put that in there, and that in there, and that there. And I may, you know, I may twist and turn and even move these things around if there's any kind of rhyme or reason, if there's some sort of interrelationship between them. But uh, again, let me just initially get them laid out so I have an idea of what I'm looking at. There we go. should have one more row here, I believe. And uh, maybe we don't need eight rows. Uh, maybe that'll take up too much space. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But there we are. So once again, uh, what does one do with blobs? Well, I'm going to spend a few moments looking at these and uh, try to get a sense of how to create kind of a, uh, a framework for these to fit in. So I don't want them to look totally chaotic. I do want it to look like there's a, there's a little bit of rhyme and reason in here. And so I'm going to take a few moments to kind of rearrange things and I'll let you know what I come up with. Okay, so I've had an opportunity to look at uh, my pieces and reassemble them, and I created a bounding box just to give it some distance at the bottom and a little less at the top, and I really like how it's turned out. I'll finish this gluing, I don't need to bore you with the gluing, and I will get this up in the gallery so you guys can take a look at it if you want to, and you'll be able to, of course, follow along at home. If you have the materials, and I'll put a link for everything down in the description below if you wanna know a little bit more about some of the tools we used on this project. Once again, it's such a pleasure to be able to share this content with you and hopefully I can inspire you and help you find your own artist inside, somewhere, hidden away perhaps, 
but uh, bring that out. It'll give you an opportunity. Just go explore, go make some stuff, and uh, it's really a great feeling when you can do that. If you've enjoyed what we've done today, then yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon, and we'll notify you every time a new video drops, which is on Friday mornings. So, hey, some great way to start the end of the week, don't you think? Anyway, thank you so much for being here, and I'll talk to you soon.